Hello and welcome to Searching the Scriptures, a daily podcast where Bible topics will be discussed and Bible questions will be given Bible answers. No opinion, just Bible. This episode is Lesson 12 of our look at the book of Titus. In the last episode, we completed our study of the qualifications of elders found in Titus chapter 1. In the last episode, we covered that an elder needs to be able to teach and not a novice as that was found in 1 Timothy 3 verse 6. In this episode, we're going to look at Titus 1 verses 10 through 16, and the episode will be titled, People an Elder Has to Face. Let's read Titus 1 beginning at verse 10. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn, that turn from the truth. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being an abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Paul has spent the last five verses of this chapter talking about the importance of a church having elders and the qualifications that uh, a man must have if they are going to be appointed an elder. And the reason why Paul spent so much time on this is because of what he concludes this chapter with. People an elder has to face. The church should not be in a rush to judgment just to appoint elders that they fail to appoint qualified elders. Because when those unqualified men have to deal with the people like are talked in verses 10 through 16, they're not going to be able to do so properly and it's going to damage Christians and it's going to damage the local church. Elders' jobs are not easy. It is not an honorary position. We'd like to think of an elder's job as exhorting the faithful. And that is true, to build up the faithful. But they are going to have to face difficulties, not only within the congregation themselves, but outside the congregation. The devil is not sitting idly by and just letting us skate through life. He tempts people to do things. He either tempts people from without to persecute us, or he tempts people from within to change the truth. And Paul is dealing with that type of problem here in Titus 1 verse 10. He says, there are many unruly, vain talkers, deceivers, especially of the circumcision. Paul had dealt with his entire life. People who converted from Judaism to Christianity, who then went on to teach the Gentiles must be Jews. If an elder is going to deal with, with this type of person, they must be a qualified person to do that. They can't be a novice. Because a novice is a, a novice being a new Christian, because they're not going to have the knowledge of how to do that. They're, they have to be able to teach the faithful word, because they have to know what the word of God says in order to recognize that someone is a deceiver. And they must have the proper attitude. They must be on guard all of the time. Not soon angry, because they're going to need the proper attitude to how to deal with someone. They're going to need to be a lover of good men and sober and just in order to make those judgments. If you have an unqualified person here, they're not going to be able to deal with the problems that will, a church will undoubtedly face. And Paul says here that when you come up with someone who is a vain talker, who is speaking empty words, useless words, a deceiver, someone who is unruly among the congregation, what is an elder to do? An elder is to stop the mouths of them that are doing that. Why? Because people that do that are subverting whole houses. They are, bringing, they are taking people away from Christianity. Whole houses, whole families are being uh, 
taken away from Christianity by people who teach these things for filthy money, filthy lucre's sake. They're just out for your money. People do that today. False prophets and false teachers are just out for your money, but they're good at talking. They're deceivers. I deal with people all of the time who say, but so, so, uh, Mr. So-and-so or preacher so-and-so on the, on the TV said this. Yes, and they're a deceiver. Satan is very good at not only deceiving people, but deceiving the people who speak. If it's not from the word. An elder is to stop those people. Those mouths must be stopped. He tells them, don't give heed to Jewish fables. Don't give heed to commandments of men. Don't give heed to people like this. How will you know which are the ones who follow God and which are the ones who who don't, by their works. That's what verses 15 and 16 is saying. By your works, you will know. Someone who doesn't follow God, by their works, they're abominable, disobedient, reprobates to good works. Someone will come along and try to say that anything found in the Bible, they're not going to say it like this, but anything found in the Bible, that's bad. And anything not found in the Bible, that's good. They're not going to come out and say it like that. But we find people arguing about what the Bible says when it comes to morality, what it says when it comes to the church, what it says on a whole host of issues. I deal with people all of the time that do that, despite what the Word of God says, teaching false doctrines. Elders need to be on guard for that. They will know by the works of the people that are saying such things as, as whether or not they are of God or not. In 1 John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, verses 6 through 8, there we read, Whosoever abides in him sins not. Whosoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous. He that commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. It's not saying that a, a, non, a Christian will never sin, but a Christian doesn't live in sin. You want to know a, a righteous person from an unrighteous person? A righteous person practices righteousness. The righteousness of God found in the Bible. Elders needed to be qualified so that they could not only build up the church, but root out the, the, the people who were teaching false doctrine, either convince them to change or root them out of the congregation altogether so that Christians would not be subverted to those false doctrines. In chapter 2, in the next episode, we're going to be dealing with sound doctrine. And that's something that I hope you'll return for because... There is sound doctrine for every group of people found in the church and found in this world. And so I hope you'll return for those episodes. But perhaps you're listening and you're not a Christian. The brethren here in Toronto would love to study the Bible with you so that you could hear the Word of God, believe it, and obey it before it is everlastingly too late. If you'd like to set up a study, you can send us an email at torontoeastendchurchofchrist at gmail.com. On behalf of the East End Church of Christ in Toronto, Canada, I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode. For free online Bible-based material or to get directions to our meeting place, you can visit our website at www.eastendchurch.org. While there, you'll also find links to more of our podcasts as well as links to the live broadcasts of our services. Should you have any questions about this or any of the other podcasts you may have listened to, you may leave a comment below or email us at torontoeastendchurchofchrist at gmail.com. Please join me, the Lord willing, again in the next episode when we will be discussing another topic from God's Word. Goodbye for now, and have a great day.